morning. We've already learned about standing waves on a string. Now we are going to apply that concept to musical instruments. Flippin' physics. Considering these are standing waves on a string, let's start with a stringed instrument like a guitar, a violin, a piano, and so on and so forth. Stringed instruments use standing wave patterns to create frequencies which our brains interpret as pitch. These instruments have strings which are fixed in place on either end. Bobby, what does having ends which are fixed in place mean in terms of nodes? Uh, can you bring back the animation which shows the nodes and anti-nodes on a standing wave pattern? Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, a node is a location of total destructive interference, and the net result is that the string does not move at all at each node, that must mean that the two ends of the strings are nodes on a stringed instrument, right? Correct. Both of the ends of the strings on stringed instruments are nodes. That means the first standing wave pattern we can create on a string has two nodes, one on each end, and one anti-node in the middle. When this is the case, Bo, how many wavelengths equal capital L the length of the string? Well, that standing wave pattern represents half a wavelength. So half a wavelength equals capital L, the length of the string. Right. Therefore, the wavelength of this wave equals two times the length of the string. Recall that the speed of a wave equals frequency times wavelength. That means the frequency of the wave on this string will equal the speed of the wave divided by the wavelength of the wave. Or for this standing wave pattern, the frequency of the wave equals the speed of the wave divided by the quantity two times the length of the string. Mr. P? Yes, Bobby? What do you mean by the speed of the wave? Remember, the standing wave pattern is created by the constructive and destructive interference of the periodic waves which are moving through and being reflected in the string. Yeah, and we found the speed of a single wave pulse on a string. So that is the speed he is talking about here the speed of the wave pulse on the string. That's right. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Billy, the next possible standing wave pattern has how many nodes and anti-nodes? Well, that would be three nodes and two anti-nodes. In that case, the wavelength of the wave equals the length of the string, and the frequency of the wave in the string equals the speed of the wave divided by the length of the string, right? Correct, Billy. And let's add one more. Bobby, what about the next possible standing wave pattern? The next possible wave pattern has four nodes and three anti-nodes. That means there are one and one-half wavelengths on the length of the string, and the wavelength equals two-thirds the length of the string, and that means the frequency of the wave in this standing wave pattern equals three times the speed of the wave divided by two times the length of the string. Very nice, Bobby. Now, I know it might not seem like there is a pattern, however, there is. I think you will see it better when I algebraically manipulate the first frequency to equal one times speed divided by 2L, the second frequency to two times speed divided by 2L, and the third frequency to three times speed divided by 2L. Each frequency is an integer times the quantity speed divided by two times the length of the string. Correct, Bobby. The frequency of the sound created by a stringed instrument equals the variable lowercase n times the speed of the wave on the string divided by the quantity 2 times the length of the string. The variable n is called the harmonic number, and when n equals 1, the frequency is called the fundamental frequency. Got it. The fundamental frequency is when the harmonic number equals 1, and the standing wave pattern has the lowest frequency, the largest wavelength, and the least number of nodes and anti-nodes in the standing wave pattern on the string. The fundamental frequency is also called the first harmonic because the harmonic number equals 1. When n, the harmonic number, equals 2, that frequency is called the second harmonic. When the harmonic number equals 3, that frequency is called the... Third, third harmonic. harmonic. When the harmonic number equals 4, that frequency is called the... Fourth, fourth harmonic. harmonic. When the harmonic number equals 5, that frequency is called the... Fifth harmonic. I think we get it. Sure, but did you notice that each of the harmonics is the harmonic number times the fundamental frequency? Oh, right. That, that means each of the harmonics is an integer multiple times the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. And that is pretty cool. Yeah. Let's take a moment to look at and hear what these frequencies sound like. When I pluck the open A string of a guitar, 
we hear a 110 hertz note because 110 hertz is the fundamental frequency for this string. When I hold my finger against the middle of the string, but I do not press the string against the fretboard, I force a node at that point in the string, and I can pluck the string to create the second harmonic. What is the frequency of this standing wave pattern? Uh, it is the second harmonic, so it should be two times the fundamental frequency. Right! So it is two times 110 hertz, or 220 hertz. Correct! And if I again hold my finger against the string, but do not press the string against the fretboard, I force a node at this point. This time I'm holding my finger one-third of the way from the end of the string. Bo, what is going on now? Well, if you are creating a node at one-third L, then this should be the third harmonic, or three times 110, or 330 hertz. What if you move your finger to the other end of the string and force a node again one-third from the other end of the string? Bobby, that forces a node at one-third L, which will create the same third harmonic at 330 hertz. What about all the other strings on the guitar? They create different frequencies than that A string. However, they all have the same length, right? Right. Each of the strings creates a different frequency or pitch. I'm not going to get into the specifics of why in this video. However, I will say that the mass per unit length of a string affects the speed of the wave on the string. A larger mass per unit length means a smaller speed and therefore a smaller frequency. That is why the lower pitch strings are larger in diameter to have a larger mass per unit length and therefore a smaller speed and smaller frequency. Uh, also, uh, tuning the tuning pegs of the guitar adjusts the tension in the strings and an increased tension means an increased wave speed and an increased frequency. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.